hello, hello. Guys, I feel like a real person. I've got makeup on, I've got my hair done, I've got some cute earrings in, uh, I'm dressed for the day. I have sweatpants on the bottom half, business on top, sweatpants on bottom. We're still in quarantine after all. Uh, but I'm dressed up because I'm about to hop on a web call with my company to talk about our future. So when I got the email that we had this meeting coming up, there was certainly potential for dread. People need to be social distancing. They don't need to be traveling. I work in transportation. So this whole thing made me kind of nervous. Uh, but that being said, the meeting is a productive one about how we're gonna move on with our future. We're gonna be talking about the new ways of transportation. Like my job probably will never be the same. Um, so I don't wanna talk like too much about it just because I haven't attended the meeting yet. We haven't shared all of our ideas, um, but the, I just wanted to let you know like what my plan was for today. So I'm sure you guys watch this channel because you're aviation enthusiasts or you just like seeing what I do for work, that sort of thing. And I've been trying to keep you guys up to date on what's going on. It's been a month since I've been on an airplane, almost. We're not quite there yet, but it's quickly approaching. In three days, it's been a month. So that's sad. Uh, I've tried to keep you guys as up to date as possible with what's going on. Uh, I'm sure you're reading the news or watching the news or however you take in the news. I'm sure you have plenty of access to the news and what's going on. I'm just here to give you like the insider perspective and let you know how the coronavirus is affecting my job. And I came from the commercial world. And so I've talked with a bunch of my friends from the commercial world and it's just insane. I had to put my camera down, my arm was getting tired. Uh, so I was speaking with my friend, Stephanie, who's a commercial flight attendant, and she just flew on an Airbus 321 with three passengers that paid for their ticket and one deadheading crew member. So there were more flight attendants than passengers on this flight. It's insane to me that anybody who is not a medical professional is getting on an airplane at this point in time. And don't come at me if you're someone who likes a deal because I love a deal more than most people I know. I shop for deals, I do my research, I like to pay the lowest price for the best quality that I can get. But there is no way in hell I would book a vacation for me and Johnny or me and my family or me and my friends to go anywhere right now. And it's unfortunate that people are even doing this or that people are talking about it because it just shows how selfish people are. Like there are some people I just don't understand. I'm bored. I'm just as bored as everybody else. I'm not about to go outside and risk my health or put someone else in danger because maybe I have come in contact with someone. I don't really know how because I'm quarantined in my house, but either way, I'm doing my social distancing. My sister lives across the street from me with my nephew who's the cutest kid in the world and I'm not spending time with them because I don't wanna catch something and I don't wanna get them sick. Anyway, I, I don't mean for the video to like take a dark turn, it's not going to. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to say, just stay home. And while you're staying home, watch my video and in about two hours, I'll have an update for you on how the world of private aviation my company anyway, uh, is gonna be handling transportation going forward. So I'll check in with you guys after this meeting. All right, so our call is over and I just wanted to check in with you guys on some things that we touched on. Uh, towards the end of the call, I got reassurance that the company I work for feels like we are valued employees and um, basically not to worry about our jobs right now, worry about how busy we're gonna be in the future making up for lost time. So 
it definitely ended well. Uh, I felt like emotional seeing my coworkers and like knowing we're not flying, just we're a, a tight group. We all get along really well. Like I've met their families, they've met mine. Um, but anyway. All right, so getting into the notes that I have, uh, the first thing that flight attendants agreed on was we're not gonna be serving off of our porcelain and our china and our glass and our silverware anymore. We are actually gonna be doing disposable plates disposable cutlery uh, just because one, I've heard a few FBOs are not accepting dishes right now. And two, it's an extra way to make sure everything is staying sanitized. Um, and then a follow-up action item that we have on that is we're not gonna be wearing gloves when we're presenting the food. We are trained to wash our hands and have good hygiene and make sure that we're serving food that's not gonna get our passengers sick. But when we're collecting those disposable items that our passengers just ate off of, uh, we're gonna be wearing gloves at that time. And then anytime we're picking up in the cabin, we'll have gloves on, um, just not when we're presenting their food. Other things uh, for the flight attendant side that we talked about, we all agree it's probably safer for us to rely on catering rather than going to a grocery store and trying to pick up food on your own. Uh, and there's a few reasons for this. Generally, a catering company can accommodate everything you want. Right now, as you guys know, grocery stores are empty and they're chaotic and it doesn't make sense for us to go to one store and they have almost everything we need, but then we have to go to another store and come in contact with that many more people. So we're gonna be doing catering instead of grocery runs. We talked about other potential hazards that there are. So sorry, I'm just reading off my notes here because I want to make sure that I don't skip over anything. Um, but we talked about just identifying hazards and that's ineffective cleaning. Uh, if a passenger becomes symptomatic during the flight, if a crew member becomes symptomatic when, when they're on a layover, um, so you've already been around that person or that passenger or crew member and exposed, now what do you do? Um... I touched on catering. Oh, and we also covered how we're gonna be handling trip requests out of government restricted areas. Right now here in the US though, we're the hotspot. So I feel like um, obviously we have to get flight clearance and when you file your flight plan and you have to plan on landing in a certain area. And if they don't want people from the US landing there, we'll know that before we're in the sky on our way over there. Um, but that was just something else for us to think about. A couple best practices. Um, I actually heard this, I can't remember, probably from the CFA Life uh, with a corporate flight attendant chiming in there on that page. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's at CFA underscore life. They are on Instagram and it's just a place where corporate flight attendants come together and share best practices and just information on what's going on in the industry. Um, but I'm pretty sure I heard this tip from there. Hotels have pretty much been empty for a while now. So if you are traveling and you are staying overnight somewhere, ask for a room that hasn't been used in multiple days, just because in case someone did have COVID-19 symptoms and they stayed in the room and they coughed and didn't cover their mouth, there's less of a chance of you being exposed to it. So um, I actually thought that's something that's completely necessary for the crew to do, but also necessary to communicate to our passengers for when they're booking their rooms on the places that we're taking them, they should be following the same thing. Our planes are gonna be deep cleaned after every leg, professionally deep cleaned. So um, that's one less thing for me to do when I start flying again. We are gonna be cleaning on board though, obviously. And just something that we were told to look at was check the label times to see how long a product has to sit on the surface to effectively kill the virus. So we've been given a list of products that we can use on the plane that won't damage the surfaces on the plane, but that will damage the COVID-19 virus. Um, so we just have to check labels. Sometimes the solution has to sit on a surface area for 10 minutes before you can wipe it off just to make sure it did its job effectively. I mentioned a lot of FBOs are not doing dishes right now. They're also not taking trash items right now, which obviously is understandable because most of the trash is food related and it has gone from someone's mouth to their hand into the trash. So we're trying to come up with a way. Do we store it in cargo? Do we triple bag our trash in case we have to take it all around on our trips and back to base? Like, what are we going to be doing? A best practice that we will be following. I don't know how effective this is going to be on my airplane because if you guys watch my vlogs, you know, 
My plane is super busy all of the time. I always have 14 people on my plane that sees 14 people. But in the rare instance, I'm not toting 14 people along. We are gonna practice social distancing our passengers. So we'll have them spaced out instead of clustered together like they generally are. In the airline industry, uh, we use something called MedAir. Generally, what we've used it for in the past is if a crew member or a passenger is having a medical issue. So you can call MedAir from the sky, say, hey, here's the symptoms. This person is so-and-so aged, they're on so-and-so medication. How can I help them? And the call goes to uh, doctors on the ground and they walk you through what to do. So um, one, it kind of takes liability off of the flight crew and two, it lets you know, here's what's gonna help to save this person's life until you're on the ground and paramedics get to the scene. Um, so anyway, we talked about med air and there's a doctor, Dr. Alvarez on there and he suggested if your plane has cabin filtration systems, which ours does to open the gaspers, which is just the air vent, uh, keep those open the entire flight and keep air moving and the sounds like something you wouldn't want to do because if someone has it and you're just keeping the air moving to other people. Um, but the way he explained it was the cabin filtration system should take care of it or it will whip through the air so many times and hopefully not come in contact with you. So I don't know, keep the gaspers open on your airplane if you have a cabin filtration system. Uh, I have a few homework assignments coming from this. So we're gonna be implementing a passenger survey. We wanna know where have you been in the past 14 days? So at the time of booking, passengers will be presented with this. They will fill it out. And based on their history, we'll decide if we want them on our plane. Something that I thought of at the very end of the meeting, we're just gonna be using paper towels to wipe everything down and not terry cloth, just because you don't wanna continue using the same terry cloth. Or even if you bring multiple ones, you have the issue of storing it and cross-contamination. So we'll just be using paper towels to clean all of the surfaces on the airplane. And then the homework assignment that I have that I will be doing with the other two flight attendants who are at my base is we're gonna be coming up with a questionnaire for caterers just because we want to know what they're doing to keep people safe during this time. So how are they handling food? How are they delivering food? What kind of protective personal equipment do they have? What stages of the catering are they using it in? So I'm going to be typing something up and sending it to the other two girls and we're going to be just kind of collaborating and adding to that list uh, and then sending that out before we choose what caterer that we'll be using in the future when we're finally able to start flying again. I did get confirmation we will not be flying through April. So that will put me at two months of not being on an airplane before I get on an airplane again. I think my flight to Jamaica was March 3rd through March 5th. So we're coming up on that really quick. Uh, it's a quick one for you guys today. I, I hope you found this information to be useful. Please, if you have tips on keeping yourself safe, especially if you're in the service industry um, and keeping those that you serve safe, post them down below for me. It would be super helpful. If you guys have questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, anything, stick it in the comment box. If you're trying to find me on social media, my Twitter handle is at Jack Travels. That's J-A-C Travels. My Instagram, same as it is here on YouTube, Jacqueline Travels. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll check in with you guys when I have more info. Thanks again.